Thank you, Lord God, that every promise is yes and amen. And yet the best is yet to come, Lord. We're so grateful, Jesus. Hallelujah. on the sick and they will get sicker is that what it said we're gonna lay hands on the sick and what they will recover praise God this is the power of the Word of God healings are gonna start to happen and manifest they're happening today at healing school are you expecting is anybody expecting well, if you're expecting, why don't you stand to your feet today? Those of you here in the auditorium, thank you so much for coming. It's going to be a great healing school. We're going to be hearing from Sharon Rich today. She's got a wonderful teaching that she's prepared. And I'm telling you, wherever you are joining us from around the world today, I just want you to know that God is for you. He's not against you. He is for you. And you know what he says in his word? Nothing can separate you from his love. No sickness, no disease, no situation will ever separate you from the one who paid the price that nobody else could afford. So man, if you're there watching on the internet right now and you've got somebody with you or somebody in the house or somebody in the office that you know could really benefit from this time, go get them, have them join you. And we are gonna have a great time today. And again, those of you here in the auditorium, why don't you greet somebody you didn't come with, introduce yourself to a new friend, and then we're gonna jump into some worship as we always do and exalt the name above every name. Come on. Put your hands together. When the battles are raging surrounding me, there's a weapon of worship that brings defeat. Yeah. Here that goes heaven, here that goes heaven on the earth. Walls and the giants are all I see. There's a song that I shout till there's victory. Here I go, heaven. Here I go, heaven. No me. They have to pray. Yeah. I won't be quiet. No, I won't be quiet. I will sing. I will sing. Come on, sing it. And all your praise is living in my lungs. I'm gonna let it out. I'm gonna let it out. All your praise is on the tip of my tongue. I'm gonna let it out. I'm gonna let it out.
God, we're so grateful for your praise that's living in our lives. You said that you gave us a brand new song when we got recreated. When we became a brand new creation, we got a brand new song and it's a song of praise that many will see and hear the goodness of God. Lord, we thank you that no weapon formed against us prospers today. Thank you that you're turning around whatever the enemy intended for our, our destruction and for our harm and you're turning it around for good. Amen. Tell somebody, God's turning it around for good for you. Come on, tell somebody. God is turning it around for good for you. Come on, sing this with me. This is working for my good. Yes, it is. This is working for my good. The Word of God's alive and doing what it should. This is working for my good. Oh yeah, come on, let me hear it. This is working for my good. Yes, it is, yeah. This is working for my good. The Word of God's alive and doing what it should. This is working for my good. I think we better sing it again. This is working for my good. This is working, this is working, this is working for my good. The Word of God's alive and doing what it should. This is working for my good. I see what you see, I hear what you hear. I will never bow to unbelief and fear. You gave me good news, something I could use. Nothing left to do but give my praise to you. Yeah, this is working for my good. This is working for my good. The Word of God's alive and doing what it should. This is working for my good. I see, I see what you see, I hear what you hear, I will never bow to unbelief and fear. You gave me good news, something I could use, nothing left to do but give my praise to you. Yeah, this is working for my good. This is working for my good. The Word of God's alive and doing what it should. This is working for my good. I believe, I believe, I believe you, I believe your word. have to try to make it come true it is already true you're just saying who will believe the report of the Lord come on let's lift our hands today and just bless the one who is above every name hallelujah 
He's worthy of all of our praise. He's greatly to be praised. Lord, we believe. We believe you. We believe your word. And we give you thanks today. Thank you for what you've done, Lord God. Hallelujah. We are believers and we believe. And we give you all praise in Jesus' name.
break the unbreakable God, we believe We believe for it From the impossible We'll see a miracle We believe God, we believe for it Yes, we do substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. God, we believe you. We believe your word. That's what we see. We see your word. We see what you said. Not only do we hear it, but we see it. That's where our hope is anchored. Not in the circumstances, not in the symptoms. God, we see where our hope is anchored. It's in the substance. It's in the evidence. And God, we believe. Because you said it. You said it. So we believe. There are several people receiving their manifestation even right now in Jesus name you just said in your heart I'm not waiting until the end I'm going to receive it right now I hear the Lord saying yes every promise is already a yes I've given you my yes go ahead and just believe and receive that even right now in Jesus' name. Lord, we look to you. You are our source. You are our life. Our eyes are on you. Looking unto you as the author and the finisher. <laughs> oh, God, we love you. We bless you. We declare that you are good. You are worthy to be trusted. break the unbreakable your supernatural life living in us is powerful your word is true and you've given me a way to be renewed when my eyes are on you when my eyes are on you I've come expecting 
There's no more heaviness, no place for fear when my eyes are on you. When my eyes are on you. And there is no sickness taking hold of my life. There is no
into that image that we were created in that identity that has become ours now as a brand new creation we look to you God we're not looking to the world we're not looking to somebody for our answers God we're looking to you you are the way, you are the truth, you are the life. You're the answer, God. You're the answer, man. <laughs> you are the way, you are the truth, you are the life, Lord God. You are the answer, you are the answer, man. Every question we have, God, you've got the answer. We cast all of our care on you. We place our eyes, our perspective, our focus on you. We say, Jesus, be exalted. Jesus, be exalted. Thank you. 
God, we raise a hallelujah to the one who is our answer, the one who is our healer, the one who loves us and will never leave us or forsake us, the one who's for us when it seems that everything is against us. God, you are so awesome, so great, so good. We will sing, we will sing, we will sing. We'll sing of your goodness, we'll sing of your power, we'll sing of your faithfulness, we'll sing of your, of your steadfastness in our day today. <laughs> oh God, we love you, we bless you. There's no place for fear in the love of God and His love that's perfect is already working in you. And that perfect love, His love, is just pushing out all that fear right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, that we can cast all of our care over on you because you love us, you care for us. We don't have to be stressed. We don't have to be filled with anxiety, fear, and worry. But God, we can rest in your finished work. We can rest in the victory that you obtained on our behalf. We will sing of your goodness, Lord. We will sing, we will sing of your goodness. We will sing. We will speak. We will teach. We will preach. We will prophesy. We will declare your goodness from the housetops, from the rooftops. 
We will say that you are good. You are good. You are good. we bless you today. We thank you for our healing school today. Thank you for this time that you have given us to gather together, study your word, renew our minds to the way that you've designed it to be. Not for us to be squeezed into somebody else's mold and somebody else's fear and somebody else's carnal normal. God, that we can choose to live supernaturally and live in the blessing of the Lord. And God, that's what we have decided to do. So Father, I thank you for Sharon. She gets ready to teach here in a few minutes. I thank you for everyone that's joining us around the world today, wherever they are joining us from. I thank you for all that you're doing here in our Colorado campus and in this ministry. And God, we give you thanks and praise. And everybody said in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Wow, it's so good to worship with you today. We're gonna break away to a video and we'll be right back in just a few minutes. Welcome to AWM Now, your source for everything happening here at Andrew Womack Ministries and Karis Bible College. Andrew's heart is to find new and effective ways to reach people with the gospel. And one way we do this is through our annual conferences, which cover a wide range of topics, including healing, business, politics, and even an event designed specifically for women. Recently, we sat down with Tracy Asia as she shared the heart behind our Women Arise Conference and how it's impacting daughters of all ages. When I think about Women Arise, I just think about women being pacted to live their lives, to be better mothers, wives, grandmothers, aunts, sisters, daughters, letting them know who they are. They have authority, knowing their identity. Women need to just come together and know that they're not in this alone. We have the same things that are, you know, coming into our minds that may be trying to attack us, may try to discourage us. We need to link our shields together and we need to go forth as sisters. We can do this, united together. The Women Arise Conference features a variety of speakers from around the world, including Carly Terrades, Sue Sheriff, Dorothy Brown, Audrey Mack, and many more. The conference also features interactive workshops covering topics such as raising godly children, time management, singleness, marriage, and more. We want them to know that they are equipped to reign, knowing their authority. Everything that you need, it's already in you. But people don't know that. Ladies don't know that. Ladies' lives have been changed by coming to this conference and getting in the Word and being fed. Thank you for the lives that you've touched by allowing us to do this. We appreciate everything that you've done. Thank you, friends and partners, for providing a place where women can come together and be equipped to rise up in their callings and walk in their true identity. To learn more about our Women Arise Conference, click on the link below. Good afternoon, everyone. How are you? Are you not excited? I was like, you know what, let me show that video because guess what next week is? It is Women Arise Conference. Where are my sisters at? Amen. I like that excitement. Can you tell that I'm an excitable person? You know why that is? Because I just love Jesus and I know that he loves me. Amen. How many out there know that Jesus loves you? Come on now. So I want to hear it. I want to hear some feedback for you, from you. I am so glad that you have joined us today at Healing School. I'm telling you, if you have come expecting, who is expecting a word from the Lord today? Well, let me tell you something. My sister, Sharon Rich, she's going to bring the word. And I guarantee you that she's going to say something. Listen for those nuggets of what God is going to speak directly to you this afternoon. I am so glad that you're tuning in with us also online. We know that you watch us every week. 
And we are so ecstatic to have you watching with us. And I'm telling you, you know what? If you need prayer today, I encourage you to call our phone line at 719-635-1111. Because we're not only doing prayer on campus, we have prayer ministers that are waiting to talk with you. Do you know that we are open 24 hours a day, five days a week, and on Saturdays and Sundays? So you know what? If you need somebody to agree with you in prayer, call our phone line. One of the things that I said, the announcements that Women Arise is happening next week, the dates are October the 28th through the 30th. We are going to have Audrey Mack in the house. Man. So we're going to have Audrey Mack. We're going to have Nicole Marbach. We're going to have Carrie Pickett. We're going to have some workshops. I don't know if anybody knows Julianne Harris. She's got a workshop. She's doing Sharon Wick of Marcus Wick Ministries. Marcus is her husband. She's going to be having a workshop. So there are going to be plenty and plenty, plenty of things for you to come, ladies. And we're going to be live streaming. So please join us online as well. Because we're having the conference, we are not going to be having healing school next week. I was getting ready to say, you all don't sound too upset about that. We won't be having healing school next week. We are busy here at the ministry, so we won't be having it live. But you can tune in and watch us. We're going to show a replay, and the replay will actually be of Audrey Mack because she would have taught last, next week anyway. So it'll be a replay of Audrey Mack teaching at healing school. It'll be the same time, 1 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. So please, because like I said, most of the times we meet and we, we're on campus, sometimes because of conferences or productions, we cannot. Also, we are having a Gospel Truth Conference in Dallas. So that's going to be happening November the 11th through the 13th. So anybody, if you live in the Dallas area, I encourage you to go to awmi.net forward slash events. You can see everything, every place, and everywhere that we're going to have a conference and that Mr. Walmack will be. Everybody excited about that? Because he is always traveling and doing something. I'm going to share some testimonies right now. I have one um, sister. She actually was watching. She said that on Saturday, October the 16th, she was watching Gospel Truth TV because that is actually where you can get the best experience of watching Healing School. And you can tell us about your testimonies there. So she said she was watching it. And when she was watching it, she was watching the Healing is Here conference, and Pastor Greg was preaching, and she said he gave him a powerful word, and he called out tumor, tumors in the left breast being dissolved. And she took it for herself, and she grabbed a hold of it, because she was diagnosed back in... 2012, but she clung on to that word. Last week, we had Mike Hesh, and if you have not seen his testimony, he has a testimony of where he had a tumor, a large-sized tumor, um, tumor as well, and it, he was healed of it, and she said that when he was teaching last week, along with what Pastor Greg was saying, she said she knew that she was healed, and she thanks God for that. She said she received her healing from breast cancer. Amen. Amen. God is good. God is good. Last week, we had some prayer. Like I said, the prayer ministers will be here up front after we finish the session. So one of our prayer ministers, she was praying for, um, it was a couple actually. She prayed for the husband. The husband had back pain. He was unable to bend over and touch his toes. And the wife, she was also... Um, having some issues. She was having pelvic area issues. So after the prayer minister, she prayed for the husband and she prayed for the wife. The husband bent over, touched his toes without any problems. And the, the wife, she was completely healed and she fell out in the spirit. Amen. And I saw the husband. I saw him. Uh, also, he was bending over, touching his toes. He too was laid out in the spirit. God is good. We had one person, uh, another person that came up for healing of agreement and they said that they had COVID earlier in this month. They had they were diagnosed with COVID and they were feeling tired. They had coughing and everything. But after that they said that um as a prayer minister was praying for them, she said that she was listening to the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit just kept saying depression, depression. And so as she heard that, she said something to the, to the woman that she was praying for about depression. And she said, I don't know. The Lord is just calling out depression to me. And the woman just started crying. 
And she said that when she said that, she started crying and then she dealt with that. Because you know, sometimes we think when you come up here and you come up for one thing, my prayer ministers, they are anointed of God and they're listening to the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is speaking things to them that even though you come up for that, the Lord might say, I need you to deal with this with my daughter. I need you to deal with this with my son. And then everything else comes into play. So after she prayed for her, she said she felt so encouraged and the power of God, she began to praise the Lord and she was just smiling. Her whole countenance was just different because she came up for one thing, but really what she was dealing with was the depression. And just, I don't know what it was from, what was going on in her life, but you know what? We don't need to know. God knows and he will meet you right where you are. Amen. I'm telling you, God is amazing and he loves to do that. How many of you like to receive some gifts? Because I like to give away stuff, you know, and Mr. and Mrs. Walmack, they have taught us that we need to give. It's better to give than to receive. And we're, you're here to receive a word from God, right? Well, we're going to give you some product as well. So at this time, I'm going to have my brother, he's going to come up here, my brother Tim, and we like to give these away. We're my first time guests. Anybody here for the very first time? You have never come to healing school. Amen. We are so glad that you joined us. Well, my brother Tim, he is going to see who's excited that's been here. This is their first time here, and he's going to put that in your hand. That is a DVD, and it is about God wants you well. Because we here, you're here. So I'm preaching to the, I'm speaking to the choir. I know that you all know that God wants you well. But you know what? Maybe somebody doesn't know that. Even if you've, if you've gotten that before, you know that, you heard when Andrew has taught it before, how about you give it away to a gift? Give it away as a gift to somebody else that does not know that God wants them well. Because he's, I'll tell you, he teaches so plain and simple. I told you that we're going to have Audrey Mack next week, right? Well, she has this teaching, um, and it's called A Table Against Our Enemies. And when I was looking at this, I was like, this is powerful. In Genesis, the 14th chapter and the 18th verse, King Melchizedek, which is a type of Jesus, took communion with Abraham to celebrate God's mighty power and victory over his enemies. This, what this is, it is a message um, about communion. And we really need to know what it really means to have communion, what, it, what we get in doing that, what it actually does for us. Anybody want that? First time guest, nobody wants it? This is another uh, DVD I want to give out. It's called Destiny Stories. It's volume two. And this is... Um, Different people that, I mean, just ordinary people that have been touched by God and they've gone on, some of them have gone on to start ministries. And you think, well, you know what, I'm just, I'm just a housewife. I'm just this. I just, you know, how can I go and do something? Well, I'm telling you, some of the people on here, Dottie, uh, I think her name is, I'm, I don't know the last name, but she is in, I think, Uganda. She lived in Virginia, never left Virginia in her life, and she's been living in Africa. So you're talking about ordinary people. Julie Mapatano, one of my sisters, again, she came over here. She originally, she had, uh, she came with her husband and her husband has since went home to be with the Lord. Six kids. She came to Karis and everything. Now she's got a ministry, Redeeming Love Ministries. So ordinary people doing things for God. Is anybody, Brother Tim is going to get that to you? My last but not least book. This is a book by, of course, none other than my sister, Sharon Rich. It's called A Gift to the Leader's Wife, a book for every wife. I, w I actually read this book. It's really a good book. But I wanted to read to you the, um, the comment by Pastor Bob Yandian, his wife, Loretta Yandian, she says, Sharon Rich has written a very powerful book to help the wife of a man who is in leadership. How many wives have a hus husband that's in leadership? Amen, sister. So she said, there are many books on leadership and books on self-help. What Sharon brings out in this book is a balance between what the wife needs for her own peace, her own peace of mind, and the spirit on how, and this... 
her own peace of mind and spirit and how in doing this, it affects how she is able to help her husband realize his full potential. Amen. We're help meets, right? We're help meets and we're there to really help our husbands. Amen. You know, what? another thing I wanted to, this is not a giveaway. So that was my last giveaway. Everything that I gave away today, our bookstore will be open today until 3.30 this afternoon. And all of that and much more is in there for you to purchase. I'm telling you, Christmas is coming up. People have birthdays. Why not bless them with the word of God, right? And there's some other things in there. We want to get the word out about healing school. Some of you said that this is your first time here. You had never come to healing school on campus before. If you go out these doors right here, right next to the ATM machine that's out there, we have these business cards and we have these pamphlets about healing school. And the reason I'm showing you this, we want you to take them. We want you to take them and we want you to pass them out because Daniel always says this too, healing school is the best kept secret and we want to get the word out. We know that people probably in the community know about us. We, wherever you live out, live at, you're in the grocery store and people are talking and they, you know, you just strike up a conversation, carry some of the business cards. They can come on campus. They can watch us online. We want to get the word out. Amen? Don't, you don't want to keep this to yourself. Just like everybody's coming up and they're doing testimonies. And I want to say this to my online guests as well as you that are sitting here. You know another thing to do? One of my students said to me that her daughter homeschools. And this is their class on Thursdays at 1 o'clock. What an opportunity, right? She said that each week her kids, her daughter and her grandkids, they're in front of the television. So I say hi to you right now, but they are in front of the television and they're learning. So we're, we're training them up from kids. So I'm telling you, if you're a homeschool mom or dad, have them tune into healing school. Because we're just like we're teaching you, we can teach them as well. And at this time, I'm going to give you an opportunity to give. I love that. I love that. That's the kind of enthusiasm we're supposed to have when we're giving. My ushers are going to come forward at this time, and they're going to pass out an offering envelope to you. If you are writing a check, please make it to Karis Bible College or CBC. There is a place there for you to write in any credit card information that you may have. We ask you to only do that out of convenience sake because we don't want you to, we're good stewards of God's money and we are not asking you to give something that you do not have. But I do want you to purpose in your heart, giving out of a heart of love. Those of you that are giving online today, if you would just go to awmi.net forward slash healing. As you scroll down, uh, you can click on our Healing Center page. That's where it will take you. And in the middle of that page, you'll see an orange donate button. Please click that button. And there, it will take you to our Student Mission Fund page. And you can prayerfully consider partnering with us, or you can give a one-time gift. Those of you that would like to text to give, you can text the word GIVE to 844-887-0796. Again, that is 844-887-0796. And there you can donate to the ministry. You know, it is the goodness of God that brings men into repentance. And so many people that if you say, you know, let me pray, they, let me pray for you for healing or something, they'll probably say, yes, you can pray for me. But that Jesus that you're talking about, no, they don't, want, they don't want to hear about that. If you Sometimes when you go to them, they don't want to be witness to about Jesus. But when you lay hands on them and they see what Jesus did or he can do, then can I hear about that Jesus, right? Well, Jesus, he was a servant. And that's exactly what we're here to do. As you see all of these students that are passing out the envelopes, some of them met you at the doors and at reception. They're going to be here praying with you. Some of them are alumni. Some of them are students. And we are doing that same example of serving. Jesus went far and wide to get the, the message out, right? Well, that's what these students are doing as well when they go on their missions trip. When we look at Philippians, the second chapter, verses 5 through 8, in the Passion Translation, it says, And consider the example that Jesus, the anointed one, 
has set before us. Let his mindset become your motivation. He existed in the form of God, yet he gave no thought to seizing equality with God as his supreme prize. Instead, he emptied himself of his outward glory by reducing himself to the form of a lowly servant. He became a human. He humbled himself and became vulnerable, choosing to be revealed as a man and was obedient. He was, per he was a perfect example, even in his death, a criminal's death by crucifixion. He was a servant, and that's what all of these students are doing here. They're servant, they're serving, just as Jesus did. It is an honor for us to give today and to give and sow. So I want you to just purpose in your heart, to give out, a, out of a heart of love, not just because you're giving into the mission fund here, but also that these students are gonna go out and serve. They are gonna go places that you and I, we probably can't go sometimes, especially with the ministries that God is placing on their hearts to do and go. But the gospel, it has to be preached. And you know what? We need money to do it. Amen? And if you're being fed here, man, just, I mean, bless it. And so see, because I, I, I encourage you, this is good ground. Amen? Amen. So let us pray. Father, we just thank you. We thank you for this time. We thank you, Lord God, for just the the love that you have for us and the love that we have to just sow today, God. We thank you, Lord God, that you give seed to the sower, God, and you give it to us, and we're sowing it in good ground, good measure, shaken together and running over, Lord God, shall we receive, Lord God. There'll be no lack in any home that gives today, God. I thank you, Lord God, that you see their heart, their motive behind giving today. It is blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. And at this time, it is my honor and my privilege to welcome to the stage our director of healing school, Daniel Amstutz. Thank you, Tracy. And thank you for coming to the healing school today and being a part of this. We've been, uh, we established the healing school back in 2011. And so what a blessing to be able to have this happening week after week after week for all of these years. And uh, we are just always grateful when you are here. So again, I heard there are several people that are here for the first time today to the healing school on our Colorado campus. Can I see your hands? Will you wave at me? Man, that is awesome. So welcome. Great to see you and great to have all of you with us today that are here for the first time, especially. And of course, you old timers, it's really great to have you as well. So thank you for coming. Thank you for being a part of the Healing School today. And again, we are going to have someone teach today who has taught for us several times before, uh, one of our favorites, and uh, she and her husband are on staff here at the ministry, and uh, Sharon has just been an incredible blessing. She's a motivational speaker, she's an author, she's a minister, she's a recording artist, and oh my goodness, she's just an amazing lady. So will you give me a big Karis Healing School welcome to Mrs. Sharon rich today. Hallelujah. Come on in now, let's give Jesus a hand. He's wonderful for all the things that he has done. We magnify him and we glorify you, Jesus. Just so happy to be here again at Healing School. It is indeed an honor, a privilege to grace this stage and to minister to the Lord's people. I am very grateful to our director, Daniel Amston. To, amen. And to Tracy Asia and to Mr. and Mrs. Womack, I wish to thank them, you know, just for their obedience unto the Lord and for them even giving such opportunity for us to minister to the Lord's people, amen. I wish to also thank a cousin that is with me, Max Frank, Mr. Max Frank, Pastor Max Frank. <laughs> so grateful that uh, he was here this week, and he's, it's been a wonderful time in our home with Pastor Max. And so grateful for all of you, my father's children. Now I wish to pray. 
I believe that God has a word today. How many of you believe that God has a word today? After such a time in worship, it just prepares the ground for everything that God would say and everything that he will do to transform us in this time that we're together. Amen. I just think it's a privilege. This is once in a lifetime. I'll never be this age again. We'll never be in this moment again. And that God would allow us to share it together. I believe it's something that will never happen again. So it is a historical moment in that God has brought us together because he wants to minister to us together. Amen. And I believe that great things will occur today. So, Father, we give you praise and we give you glory. There is no one like you in all the earth and we adore you. We magnify you. We exalt your holy name. We thank you, God, for this moment, this hour. Thank you for your people. I thank you for those who are across the world watching, even in this moment, standing on the brink of a miracle. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Standing in the midst of what is a Kairos moment where everything changes. Why? Because they have come to lay at your feet and to feast at your table, and to receive that which you have for them. So God, we say do it again. Hallelujah. Oh, you roll back seas, you heal the blind. Oh, you restore sight, and you give destiny to those who have no vision. And we're saying, God, do it again. Do it again, God. Speak and and send your wind and your glory to change us forever. We glorify you and we magnify you, Jesus. Oh, we bless you and we adore you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Today I would like to speak to you about something that is applicable to all of us. I want to talk about the heart. As a matter of fact, I like to talk about healing the broken heart. A time of inner healing. And why am I smiling? Because I know Jesus heals the brokenhearted. Amen? He is the healer of all flesh. And there is nothing too difficult for him. Amen? Luke 4, 18 through 19 It says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Jesus said, he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. I love this scripture because it it specifies three, even four different areas that Jesus came to do. It says that he sent me to heal the brokenhearted, but before that, he says he has anointed me to preach the gospel. But it sounds as if he's given him specific assignment, which we know he did, God the Father. He gave him an assignment to heal the brokenhearted and to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind and to set at liberty those who are oppressed and thereon to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. When looking at the heart and brokenheartedness, while doing research, I, came, I became aware that there's something called broken heart syndrome. You know, we all know about Romeo and Juliet, how they were brokenhearted. There are examples of storytelling, whether well, Shakespeare did it or we're talking about those who we know who have suffered such heartbreak. But the Mayo Clinic, they said broken heart syndrome is a temporary heart condition 
that's often brought on by stressful situations and extreme emotions. The condition can be triggered by, seri by serious physical illness or surgery. It may be also called stress cardiomyopathy, and it yet speaks of a temporary condition in which there is sudden enlargement of the heart muscles. They went on to say that triggers of this particular of cardiomyopathy, when it occurs, it not only affects the heart, but it also affects the vessels. And it says that 90% of reports that are shown that often, even though it occurs with many individuals, that it often targets ladies. And then we have what seems to be, it just takes its pick where it says people with, people with broken heart syndrome may have sudden chest pains or think that they are having a heart attack. Broken heart syndromes, syndrome often affects just part of the heart, temporarily disrupting heart's normal pumping function. The rest of the heart continues to function normally or may even have forceful contractions. Now they say that this particular condition, that it may heal itself in a day or two. But these are some of the things that we find that triggers it as well. The death of a loved one, a frightening medical diagnosis, domestic abuse, losing or even winning a lot of money, strong arguments, a surprise party, public speaking, job loss or financial difficulty, divorce, physical stressors such as asthma attack, COVID-19 infections, broken bones, major surgery. Now, out of all those things, we are aware that some, something like that has an event of one of these kinds have happened before to most of us, where you've had a surprise party or sudden news. And um, it is interesting to know that this triggers it. When we're thinking of triggers and we're thinking of heart matters, we must be aware of what causes triggers of our heart. We must be aware of what actually causes a change of heart within our emotions, our being. And by knowing these things, we're able to guard against them. Amen? It is said that over 600,000 people in the U.S. die every year over heart situations or complications. And it's also said that 18.6 million deaths are attributed to CVD globally. And so that's all the bad news, all right? Say bad news. Bad, bad news, yes. And so we have the good news of Jesus Christ. There is hope, there is a future. And I've talked about heart conditions simply because I believe that there are links to what is happening in a person's body along with what happens in their emotional realm. They have proven it. They did a study of 40 people were analyzed in New York and all of them who felt intensely rejected, are, they took part in this study. And what they notice is that when they thought about their best friends, you know, a good relationship, their heart and their brain signals, it, it changed. And then when they thought of things that had broken their heart, it affected their heart as well as affected their emotions. The reading in the survey showed the change. 
And so all of these things are very, very um, instrumental in allowing us to see that the way that we think, act, the things that we encounter, that it has an effect on us. And I believe that God today will give us tools to actually approach situations where we may not have been successful before in reigning in our emotions, in coming out victorious, in thinking positive, but not only thinking positive, but having the word of God to cause us to reflect on what is good. The scripture says, Proverbs 17 and 22 says, a merry heart doth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit drieth the bones. When we translate dry at the bones, it speaks of actually, it like totally wrings the strength out of you. It takes away your joy. It takes away your bounce back. It takes away your resilience. It drieth the bone. That's what a broken spirit does. And it says a merry heart in Proverbs 15 and 13 again says a merry heart maketh a cheerful countenance, but sorrow of the heart, the spirit is broken. Proverbs 18 and 14 says the spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity. So if you have joy going through uh, what it looks like what has come to attack your body, sickness, disease, infirmity? The spirit of a man. They say, you know, they say that there are individuals who are more positive than others. So they say that people who are positive, who actually look for the good in what is going on. They're, not, they're optimistic, not pessimistic. They, they look for what is good. You know, have you met those people that if, even if it's a sunshiny day and everything's going well, they're like, I know it's going to rain on my parade. I just know. I just know it's going to rain on my parade. Regardless as to how beautiful it is right then. Because they are thinking negative. They believe that if anything negative can happen, it will happen to them. And a lot of times what has happened to break individual spirits through the years caused them to think that way. We have to on purpose determine that we're going to think positive. That we're going to believe God's word, right? And all of those three scriptures, the Hebrew word for broken or wounded means stricken or distressed. It is referring to someone who has been battered, fractured, torn. It also speaks of the sorrow of heart that sometimes encourages depression, oppression. And so all of these things are very common to man. David said, he had an experience of brokenness, but he felt like his brokenness was because of his transgressions. And one may believe that God is angry with them because of their past transgressions. There is a scripture that says, old things are passed away, and behold, all things are made new, or are new, are made new. Amen? Amen. And so we know that God is not angry with us. That he, we are the apple of his eye? Yes. That he's numbered the hairs on our head? Amen? Amen? Be they great or small, he's numbered them. Amen. Things change. Say things change. things change. But we're going to stay happy in Jesus. Amen. Happy in Jesus. So he loves us so much. His, his thoughts are many towards us. More than all the grains of sand yes. upon the sea. His thoughts. So every moment he's thinking about you. Say, God is thinking about me. His thoughts are many towards me. Amen. So in Psalms 38, 1 and 8, David was having some, one of those moments where he felt like that some of his hardship had come because of his transgression. 
And it says, oh, Lord, in, first, in the first verse of Psalms 38, it says, oh, Lord, rebuke me not in thy wrath, neither chasten me in thy hot displeasure. And then in the verse 8, it says, I am exhausted and completely crushed. How many people in here have life ever crushed you? You weren't expecting it. It was a suddenly, just something out the blue. When you've, when you've done right by people and they choose to wish and pray that you forget how to breathe, that kind of crushing. <laughs> When you meet those people and you go through life situations, you got to keep a smile on your face and decide that I am the apple of God's eye. Yes. Who or what can be against me if God be for me? If God is on my side, if God is commanding the blessing, the yes and the amen over my life, regardless as to what's going on. I knew a family, they had fire after fire after fire, and they lost everything. And it's something about this uh, particular individual. They stayed in our home for a while. And what I found out about these people was that they had resilience. They kept with their pattern. This is what I do in the morning. This is where I go. These are the people that I interact with. And this is what I'm doing to prepare my future. Another place to live. To replace things that have been taken. And God gave them back not only what they lost. But say overflow. Abundance and blessing. He's promised that regardless as to what we're going through. That he has blessed us and not cursed. We cannot be cursed. So when those things that happen in life that break your heart, shatter your dreams, shake your world. When those things come about, you've got to know that God is your stability. That on the solid rock of Christ Jesus, you can stand every day. Every day. And so when you're dealing with individuals who even may... um, who may have made broken promises. There are individuals that that they have a problem with looking forward to the future, hoping for anything good. Why? Because they've had so many people break promises to them. And so it hurts them to even hope. I've dealt with an individual like that. This individual had lost um, two children before the age of three. Uh, Her mother and father had passed away before she was 10. Uh, She had buried a husband and then older children. And because of the heartache, because of the pain, on simple things like going back to a store to get something that she saw yesterday that brought joy to her heart, she was like, it's gonna be gone. It won't be there. And she was, this this was the cry of her heart. Why? Because so many damaging moments had occurred. But what she had was resilience. So even though she may have thought of it that way, she would always have a chipper attitude. It's like, this is going to be a great day. So there was a balance that she had. She was ever fighting this thing. Why? Because it was part of her reality. It's part of your reality of all that has happened. But the truth of the reality is that Jesus heals every broken heart and mends mends every wounded spirit. Amen? So David is saying that he's exhausted. So there are individuals, so that does away with the excuse that uh, your broken heart, you have to keep it because you have done things that are going to be perpetually seen in your life that occur because of past mistakes. Amen? I wish to break now everything that's been tied to your past. We're going to get free today, right? You and me, all right? Everything, every negative word, every downcast look, everything that's come against you that comes to push against your destiny and what you know God has said about you. 
I decree and declare, hallelujah, that in this moment, that there will be a before and after. Hallelujah. A before this day and an after this day. We embrace, we receive the grace of God to move forward. Hallelujah. Without condemnation, without reserve, without apprehension. But we're walking on the grace of God. Like Jesus walked on water, you can walk on the grace. So today, I step out on the grace of God. Step by step, I do what I could not do before. Why? Because today is the dividing line. And we plead the blood of Jesus. We put the blood of Jesus between you and it. Hallelujah. We cast down every word that's ever been spoken. And we say that you are the redeemed of the Lord. You're the blood bought. Hallelujah. Greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world. And that no weapon, again, no weapon formed against you prospers. Amen. Hallelujah. There are also individuals who have been labeled as outcasts. We'll go through the scriptures. And it says, for I will restore health to you and your wounds I will heal, declares the Lord. Because they have called you an outcast. Jeremiah 30 and 17. It is Zion for whom no one cares. So we've spoken about if you have been an outcast. You know, uh, I grew up in a very large family. And so I've always been like, you know, I bring my own posse. Y'all mean the harm, but I bring my own posse. And God has given you your own posse. The blood bought, the redeemed. Come on now. Your brothers and your sisters in Christ. He's given you, hey, that's good. He's given us a cloud of witnesses. You know, every once in a while, you just need to tag a friend in a text and say, you know what? You say, greater is he that's in me and have them give you back a scripture. And you send them a scripture and you go back and forth to the joy of the Lord rises in you. So resilient that whatever's going on in your world becomes just a shadow compared to what it would have been. And in the light of his glory. Amen. And so the next scripture, it says in Proverbs 13 and 12, it said, hope defers, make the heart sick. And so a deferring things that are being deferred, delayed, they can cause one to lose hope, to lose strength. But that's not today, right? No. Because we're living in the after overflow. Amen. Yes. What is the after overflow? It is that we we believe that regardless as to what yesterday or this morning brought, that now we're walking on the grace of God. We're embracing the grace and the favor. You know, favor, I've heard people that say that favor is not fair, and it really isn't. Favor is not fair. Oh, no, favor is not fair. But you are favored. You are favored. You are favored. You are favored. The favor of the Lord is upon us. And so when you run into people who don't like your favor or they bump into your favor and they have exception with it, you've got to know this is not something that you gave yourself. It is a gift. Wear it well, honey. Adjust your crown and keep on walking. Put a smile on your face and keep on walking. And say, I'm surrounded with favor. Hallelujah. I'm surrounded with grace. I'm surrounded with hope. Why? Because it is the gift of God. Now, it would be foolish for an individual to work against the favor of God. Your enemies. It would be be foolish. Why? Because he will every time bring them to an open shame. You cannot bump into favor. Discard favor. Walk over favor. And think that there is nothing that is part of walking against the favor of God. The scripture said it's hard to kick against the prick. (laughs) Why would anyone ever want to kick against what God has given? Whether it's when I look at this ministry and I saw the favor of God even uh, during the years while there were several different construction uh, programs going on. And the nation were going through turbulent times. And yet three different um, 
constructions projects were going on. Some, one, some of them were concurrently and other ones were going on just, I mean, really started and going at the same time. And while I, were serving as C, while I was serving as CFO, I would see the favor of God. I couldn't explain why other um, individuals were not seeing that kind of favor. When I say individuals, I'm talking about we would have, you know, Pastor uh, Brother Womack would say, you know, what God was doing, and we would hear feedback, you know, we don't, it's not going like that, you know, here and have attitudes. The thing is, I'm not going to push against the favor of God because it flows from the head down. That's just common sense. <laughs> say common. common. Sense is not common anymore. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> it's not. But common sense says that if favor flows from the head down and God has anointed him as a general in the body of Christ, I can decree and declare and say that if God is doing that for Brother Womack, if he's given him a vision and he's staying the course to what God said, then the vision that God has given me, I'm going to stay to the course of it and I'm going to see the same manifestation of the glory, the favor, the finances, the provision of God. He's the same God. And he changes not. He changes not. And if he did it for him, he'll do it for you. Walk up right before him, do what he said to do. What I saw about them in that moment, Mr. and Mrs. Woman, they stayed the course of what the Lord said. They didn't go off and get another vision. They completed what God, and God funds his, his visions. He gives provision for his vision. Amen? All right. So hope deferred. So those who have been hoping, wishing, believing for things, and it seems like it's not happening, God, you're standing on a threshold of a miracle. Don't give up. Don't give in. Don't turn around. Stay the course. Say, stay the course. Stay the course. course. See, if I ever would have learned how to play um, golf or uh bowling well, I would have known to stay the course. You just, you position yourself regardless. It don't matter if people throwing popcorn, cussing, drinking beer in there, just whatever. Of course, that wasn't where you probably want to stay. But I'm just saying, you just kind of stay the course. You're supposed to put one foot in front of the other and take the ball and go back and not pop your back out. (laughs) And you stay the course and roll it properly. At some point, you're going to get the same results that the champions get. It's a fact. I love Tiger Woods and all those who have gone before and they do the, honey, no. That whole swing thing. That whole swing thing. But they stay the course. They take the right form. They position themselves correctly, and that's what we must do as the body of Christ. We must take the right form. We must position ourselves and know that as we follow through with what the Word has said, that the result will be what God said. Amen? He cannot fail. He does not lie. His Word will not change, and it will not fall to the ground. He's not going to change it in the middle of your happy day. He's not going to change it. He's going to bring His Word to pass. Hallelujah. He's going to bring his word to pass. So we know that deferred dreams and such causes brokenheartedness. Psalms 147, 2 and 3 says, The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers together the outcasts of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. This particular scripture speaks of it of God actually mending stitch by stitch your wounds, your hurt, your pain, your anxiety, all the things that have come to you to wear you out, that God is stitch by stitch putting your life together, stitch by stitch answering your prayer, stitch by stitch erasing memories that trigger heart pain. There are triggers. But God is mending it stitch by stitch by stitch by stitch. Hallelujah. And he's rolling away the reproach that went along with the broken heart. How many of you know that God removes reproach? And he changes your name from a byword. What is a byword? When David was going through all of his uh, trials and afflictions and the things that, that he encountered, his name became what they call a byword. They were like, have you heard what happened to David? Yeah. 
Did you hear what was going on to David? You know, you always got those people that love a little bit of gossip, right? If it's not them. And this is the way you can tell if it's gossip or not, okay? If you replace their name with your name and you tell that same story, and it blesses you, you know it's not gossip. I just thought of that on the fly. It's good. <laughs> yeah. If you tell that same story with that same vigor, same face, same voice, same, come on. Then it might not be gossip. And if it blesses you. Hmm, that was good. Okay, all right. <laughs> all right. Yes. And so I love where it says that he binds up. He binds up. So he wraps the broken hearted. Anybody ever been wrapped in the love of God? Wrapped in his comfort, in his strength, in his hope. He binds us up. So love that verse. And then when we look at the spiritual broken hearted, we see many causes of heartache. Let's just go through a few of them. I have them listed there. Physical abuse, verbal abuse, aggression, aggressive behavior, scandal, accusation, persecution, racism, trauma, death, and loved ones' deaths. Death of loved ones. All of those things can cause a broken or a wounded spirit. And for all of those, we see where God, again, in Luke 4 and 18 through 19, it says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Okay. And he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. You know, everything that Jesus did, he was successful. So if God sent him to heal the brokenhearted, if your heart is broken in this place today, even as I am speaking to you, the hand of the Lord is going in and doing what looks like surgery. The thing about a broken heart, no one can tell. You know, people can camouflage a broken heart. You can put on the right clothes, put a smile on, adjust your hair, your wig, your whatever you're wearing today. Come on. And you go on in his name, put a smile on and keep on going, and people will never know. That you go to your car and you cry. That you go to the bathroom in crowded places after you've walked into lonely, crowded rooms and you cry. You readjust your lipstick, you come back out and you smile for Jesus. But there are many broken hearts. I am going to even go further to say that some of these things that happen as a broken heart are things that the body of Christ needs to experience. If we are the body of Christ, that means we have also have a heart. Amen? So the body has a heart. There have been things that have been disappointing to the overall body of Christ. Things that have been delayed with the body of Christ. There have been disappointments. And even as God is healing us today in this place, our physical body, our inner heart, I believe that he's also healing the body of Christ. There would have been a million things that I would have wanted to talk about, but I believe that God gave me to speak about this broken heart today. And that the body of Christ, what the enemy has tried to do, he's tried to use our trigger points. There are things that triggers the body of Christ that cause us to divide. When the world is dividing, we should not divide. It would be the same as if uh, I come from a big family. Like I said, I bring my own posse. I have my own group and I'm grateful for them. But it would be the same as someone saying something that is a trigger point to divide and scatter me and my other 15 brothers and sisters. If they know our trigger point, if they find out that every time we talk about racism, that it divides us. If every time that we talk about 
X, Y, and Z. Just fill it in. That it becomes a place that it divides us. And it also causes feelings of rejection, feelings of being outcast, whether it's a denomination that feels rejected or they feel like they're the outcast. But Jesus died for all of us. You know, it, it is so simple how the enemy plays the same game again and again and again. All over the world, anyone watching this, they have a heart. They understand the body of Christ to some degree. And if they understand the body of Christ, they also know that we have been made to be fitly joined together. But the enemy comes to divide us and to wound us. So then we go off into our separate corners, our separate areas, not for service, but to mend our wounds. But Jesus is the mender of wounds. Yes, he is. I'm grateful for all that the psychologists and the counselors do. I, I, I think they are a gift to society. But there are some intricate things that when they get finished explaining you to you and going back to whatever occurred, that it takes the hand of God to go in and then heal it. Doctors can go in, they can do the surgery, they can do all that they know, but it takes God to take your body, mend it back together, remove any scar tissue, and cause you to live on. And that's the way it is with the body of Christ. God is mending us together again in this hour. So we need to know how to heal the brokenhearted. I would like to say... That as an example, if one has a fragile piece of china, okay, you have to learn where to put your emotions. You don't go tell all your business to everybody. Everybody's not happy for you, okay? Nope. Just take my word. <laughs> From a friend of a friend of a friend. Just take my word. <laughs> so... You don't give your fragile emotions, tell your deepest, dark secrets and toss it to somebody who you don't know where they stand. They don't know you, you don't know them. I don't know what it is about Facebook that people just want to be transparent, tell all their life, their whole life, their whole life. You don't want to give your fragile, your fragile China, to just anyone. When I'm serving with fragile China from England saints, I don't send everybody into the China cabinet. There are some people who are going into your China cabinet who have no sensitivity to how fragile your China is. They don't have any sensitivity to how, you, how fragile your story is, how much it hurt, how much you yet have reoccurring dreams, how, mu how broken you are from what happened. And so I would say, put your china, cab your china in your china cabinet and trust it to Jesus. Amen? Amen. And to those who he tell you it is okay for. You know, when we were younger, there used to be shows like Donna Hugh and Ricky Lake. See, now I done told my whole age, okay? Oh, I'm up there. Andera, <laughs> they would get on there and they'd tell everything. There are just some things you never tell. You take it to the grave. I want to say again, there are some things, some broken places that you never tell. You tell it to Jesus, and he heals it, heals it, and if there are authorities that need to be involved, you do what's necessary. You go get counsel and such. You can't tell everything. Amen. Amen. All right. So when I see that things can be fractured and shattered easy, the broken heart, if this represents the heart, we have to be careful that we don't do things, whether we're talking about the body of Christ or we're talking about to individuals that will break them and shatter them. Amen? 
Okay, because God is healing the brokenhearted. The scripture in Ephesians 4 and 32, it tells us how to heal the broken heart. It says, be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. First Peter 4 and 8 says, and above all things, have fervent love for one another, for love will cover a multitude of fault and sin. Love covers. And then first, 2 Corinthians 10, 4 through 5 says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So what do we get out of that? We're getting to cast down imaginations. After so many things have occurred, one can use their imaginative skills and their imagination. And sometimes even the things that we think we're seeing, we're not seeing as they actually are. We see it through the prism of that hurt. We see it through the hue, the color of what happened before. And so he said that he has come to restore sight to the blind. So the restoration of sight then becomes where we see things more clearly. Our vision clears up. It's not uh, jaded by our previous experience. But now it's looking through the eyes of faith, through the eyes of hope, through the eyes of a new day, through the eyes of old things are passed away and, old, and now all the things have become new. All things. And so with that, also what we're seeing is that we're to make love our weapon. So the weapons of our warfare, really, we can't, you don't sow evil for evil. You never, say never, never. sow evil for evil. Never. 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 See, but this is the thing, while they're sowing on you, if you, re so in other words, people may sow tares, wheats, bad things into, to, towards you or towards the group of people that you're associated with. If you don't sow back evil, you're not putting something in the ground that'll come up later as well. Yeah. See, part of what they're doing, it's going to come back with a great harvest. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't want to take part of the seed that they've sown and then plant it over in your field. Keep on planting gentleness, meekness, love, comfort, hope, long-suffering. Keep on, keep on. Be, just become, become the, you know, become the joke. Jokes rise up. Hallelujah. Jokes, God prospers those who will take the right way. So you're a joke to them. But God lifts you up. Why? Because he can trust you. That like his son, while being hung on a cross, he did not resort or retaliate. He would not resort to doing what they did. He did not retaliate. And so he, could tr he sent them because he could trust him. Can God trust you? Can he trust you to be made fun of? Can he trust you? to be mistreated can he trust you that you won't go burn them they house and the dog down if they do something ugly to you and you smile through it and you know that God I'm not talking about fake the joy of the Lord hallelujah the joy of the Lord is your strength and so while they're saying whatever they're saying, it's like chatter. It's like hearing that, who was that? that uh, was it Linus that whenever they would talk, it was like, wah, wah, wah. That's what's going on. Who was it? Charlie Brown's, Charlie Brown's teacher. Every time they were saying something, wah, 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 wah. That's the way it is when you dwell in the secret place. When you decide that you're going to sit in heavenly places with him and that really... 
You're going to choose to do that which is right. So you don't make that choice in the middle of what's going on. You make that choice before you get to that day. You just walk into that choice. You walk into that reality. You walk into that strength. Why? Because you sent strength ahead because you already decided. And so the love of God, it is a weapon. It's not only a weapon against the enemy, but it is a guard over your heart. There is a scripture that says, above all, guard your heart. With all diligence, guard it. Before you make sure that your stock is increasing. Before you make sure that your profession, that you're moving along the career path. Make sure that you're guarding your heart. And so the guard of the heart is making love your weapon. The scripture says in Philippians 4 and 8, it says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be anything virtuous, if there be anything of praise, think on these things. So it's deciding, making a mental decision that the reflex of what I'm going to do is I'm going to think on those things that were mentioned. True, lovely, of good report, virtuous. All of those things that be of praise, that's what I'm going to think on. Why? Because it guards my heart. It helps me not to encounter what would later cost me heartache and pain and also manifest in my body because of brokenness. That was Proverbs 4 and 23, to watch over, to guard your heart. And so when we look at David, again, he says, when anxiety was great within me in Psalms 94, 19, you consolate, your consolation brought me joy. So the comfort of the Lord is also a guard to your heart. When life is hard, things going crazy, and people who should be kind to you are being cruel, crawl into Jesus' lap. Turn on some worship and go into a place that only, hallelujah, that only those who are seeking him can go. And it will guard your heart. When I thought about how individuals have access to your heart, it made me think of the first commandment. It says in Exodus 20 and 3, it says, you shall have no other God before me. No other God before me. No one else's opinion of you. When we exalt their opinion above what God has said, if he said that you are fearfully and wonderfully made, and you exalt what they're saying above that, is he said he's given you the spirit of wisdom and knowledge and strength, and someone says something different, and you exalt what they say above what he has said, it's an idol. Why would you value what Run Run said over what Jesus said? Come on. Why would you? The person who knit you in your mother's womb. Hallelujah. Who thinks about you constantly. Who's preparing a place for you who gives you strength day after day after day after day. Why would you take run one's word over what Jesus has said? That you are beautifully and wonderfully made. When I look at my hands and I see the wrinkles now, I just say it's beautiful and wonderful. It's beautiful and wonderful. Whatever it is, it's beautiful and wonderful. It's like looking at a masterpiece. I, I see this with young ladies, and they've bought into the lie, or the airbrush lie, 
that's on the, you know, magazines, they airbrush all of that. Y'all know they airbrush it, right? <laughs> they fix it. That girl didn't get up looking like that in the morning. <laughs> they fixed that girl. They fixed her, and then when they got finished fixing her, then they went back and they painted over what they saw that was the image. They airbrushed it. Yeah. She don't look like that in the morning. She looked like you. <laughs> no lipstick, no eyeshadow, no contour, nothing. She looked just like you. And let me tell you something about these bodies. They are a vehicle. That's why when people get older and it's their time to go, whenever, I'm talking about when they're 100 or whatever, and they're like, okay, you know what, I've done enough, I've seen it all, my children are good, I've done finished my course, I've done the work. That's why they say, I'm going to leave this vehicle right here. I'm going to be with Jesus. Oh. Hallelujah. I'm going to step out of this reality and step into what is the real reality, and I'm going to be with Jesus. Why? Because it's just a vehicle. You want to treat it right, you want to give it gas as you would a car, so you want to give it the right nutrition, the right things that make it run, but it is a vehicle. Love your vehicle, honey. Put something on it and just say it's good. Whatever it is. That's right. That's right. Don't try to fit into what these, these man-made little, you got to look like X, Y, and Z. It's like telling the master that his masterpiece was not good enough for you. You're wonderfully and fearfully made. Just tell yourself. You know, when I was growing up, because, you know, I had some haters growing up in, in high school. So I thought I was the ugliest thing that ever. I really, honest to God. And they called me olive oil. Now, that's not my China out for y'all. That's just, it just is what it is. So I actually started believing these people. Until I decided, then when you run into them 10 years later, they say, oh, you could have been a model. Well, no, you said I was ugly. You can't be no ugly and be an ugly model. You can't be. So look, look at yourself, say, whatever I am today is fearfully and wonderfully made. It's, it's all that and the bag of chips. You got to tell yourself that. See, I see y'all not getting it. Say, I'm beautifully and wonderfully made. My shade, my eyes, my feet, my neck, my lips, fearfully and wonderfully made. The master did a wonderful job making a masterpiece out of you. Amen? Okay. So, we're not going to put their word above God's word. We ought to have no idols. Nothing that they say is more valuable than what God has said. Amen? All right. And so, this is one of the things that also keeps you out of trouble and guards your heart. And it says in 1 Samuel 30 and 6, it said, and David was greatly distressed for the people spake of stoning him because of the souls of all the people was grieved. Every man for his son and for his daughter, but David encouraged himself in the Lord. That's what we just got through doing, right? You've got to say, you got to speak good to yourself. So what did David say when he began to encourage himself in the Lord? He began, it may have sounded something like Psalms 91. He may have said, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in him I will trust. My God, in him I will trust. Surely he will deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence and shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings, under the wings of the Almighty. Hey, there's no bigger brother or sister. Under the wings of the Almighty. Who would dare come under the wings to come get you? Who's going to come snatch you from the wings? I love that scripture that says, who can pluck you out of my hand? Who's going to come along and snatch you back into doubt, oppression, depression? While you're under the shadow of the Almighty. While you're under his wings of protection. And I will say, and his truth shall be your shield and buckler. He began to say the word. 
In verse 5, it said, and you shall not be afraid of the terror by night. So David said, no, I'm not going to be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that fly by day, nor the pestilence that wake in darkness, nor of the destruction that lay waste at noonday. A thousand may fall, may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand. But it shall not come, say, it shall not come nigh me. It shall not overtake me. It will not take me out prematurely. I will live and declare the glory of the Lord in the land of the living. I'm going to live on. Don't do, your, don't do your enemies any favor and die. Keep on living. Keep on smiling. Allow the joy of the Lord to be your strength. Regardless as to what's going on. You stay in the secret place and encourage yourself. And finally, there's another scripture when we talk about Paul and Silas. They prayed and sang unto the Lord. They sang, they worshiped, they blessed the name of the Lord, and they were set free. Amen? A great earthquake came. God, if the earth is his footstool. And you worship him. He will, call, he will cause the earth to shake in your surroundings and in your problematic areas as well as in the things that are seemingly going to overtake you. If God puts his foot down one time, Amen. it's going to shake all of those things. Everything that can be shaken will be shaken. But when it's over with, you're going to stand fast and see the salvation of the Lord. And you're going to walk into, into his liberty. Amen? Amen? And so you sing and you worship. And then in 2 Samuel 6 and 12, 14, 2 Samuel 6 and 14, and David danced before the Lord with all his might, and David was girded with the linen ephod. So if we're talking about keys to inner healing, let's go over them again. You're going to forgive. We're going to forgive everyone, Okay. Dead, alive, or sitting beside you. We're going to forgive every. <laughs> forget, smile. We're going to forgive everybody. That's a good exercise right there. Say, I forgive you. I forgive you. In Jesus' name. I want you to say that again. It's going to free you. Say, I forgive you. In Jesus' name. So we're going to choose not to keep on playing it over again as a record, what they did, how it happened, who was involved. It don't even matter. Why? Because the King of Kings loves you. <laughs> You're his favorite. Okay. And then we're going to choose love. Okay. We're going to choose the weapon of love. And we're going to select our thoughts. We're going to think on those things that are lovely, of good report, virtuous, praiseworthy. We're going to encourage ourselves like David did. And then we're going to speak the word that a thousand shall fall at our side and 10,000 at our right hand, but it's not going to come nigh us, right? We're going to speak the word that I am healed. I am whole. I am favored. I am beautiful. I am what God called me to be. We're going to speak the word. Amen. And then use your weapon of praise. Use your weapon of praise. Now I would like you all to stand and we're going to praise him. Hallelujah. Father, we give you glory and we give you praise. You're wonderful in all your ways. There is none beside you. We delight in you, Lord. Our affections are set towards you. So with your own lips, give him praise for all the things he's done. You've been wonderful. You made a way out of no way. You opened doors that no man could open and you shut what could not be. Hallelujah. What should not be. We thank you for healing our body, our mind, our soul, our will, our intellect, our homes. Hallelujah. Thank you for healing our visions. Hallelujah. Thank you for giving us sight again. Thank you for giving us hope again. Thank you for giving us trust again. We will trust again. Say, I will trust again. Because I trust you, God. 
Hallelujah. So bless him in this place. Glory to Jesus. You are the everlasting God. Oh, you're wonderful. You're wonderful. You're wonderful. Oh, you're wonderful, Jesus. Yes, you're wonderful. Hallelujah. Give you all the glory. Give you all the praise. Thank you for healing me, Jesus. Thank you for mending me, Jesus. Thank you for hearing my prayer. Thank you for clearing the way. Thank you for the favor, 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 favor. Thank you for favor, God. Thank you for a hope and a future. There is someone here today that someone said something so many times that you've as if you were writ you've written in, in your heart. I see that the hand of the Lord coming in and erasing the writing. Oh Sunday, Sibrieste la Munsi anda manso. You heal every wound. Go deep and heal everyone, Jesus. Oh, we trust you today. We trust you, Lord. You are the glory and the lifter of our head. There is nothing too hard for you. Oh, we give you praise. Oh, we give you praise. Oh, we give you praise, Jesus. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. There are some of you in this place that because of what you've experienced, literally you do have effects in your body. So right now in the name of Jesus, I break off. I break off the effects of the pain. The hardness of heart. The crying in the middle of the night. The nightmares. We curse nightmares in Jesus' name and night terrors. In the name of Jesus, the angel of the Lord, encamp about those who fear him. Thank you, Father, that even as they rest tonight, they will know that there has been a difference. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Oh, we give you praise and we give you glory. for all the maternal and paternal damage that has been done to you. We forgive them and we receive the healing power of Jesus. Breathe in. The breathe in the healing power of Jesus. Hallelujah. Fill their lungs with hope. Fill their lungs with the future. Fill their lungs with happiness and their souls. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, we give you praise. We give you praise. Oh, we love you, Jesus. Thank you that tomorrow is better than all of our yesterdays put together. Because you heal every wound, dry every tear. Oh, Jesus. Bless you today. The greatest pain that anyone could ever know is not knowing the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. If you are here today, are you watching online, and you wish to know this great healer, this great Savior, repeat after me. God, I ask that you would forgive me of all my sin. I repent and I ask that you would come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. 
I receive you now. And I make you Lord of my life. Teach me through your word how to please you, how to live for you. In Jesus' name. If you prayed that prayer, please come down. Hallelujah. Healing power of Jesus Christ is here today. (laughs) I saw someone while I was praying. I seen them as a younger person. This person couldn't have been no older, but about nine, ten years old. And someone did something very damaging to you. And you've been stuck there. You've been stuck. But I saw the hand of the Lord reach as it were down to you and lift you out of your stuck place. He comes to give you a hope and a bright future and to race away whatever happened. All the violations, all the cruel deeds, all the intentional hurt, all the disappointment. Jesus, the healer, sets you free today. Lift your hand and thank him. Hallelujah, we thank you, Father. We glorify you. We bless you. Thank you for healing today. Thank you for healing the secret scars, the things that people do not know exist. Thank you for wiping them away, making them white as snow. Glory to Jesus. It's something about when people get free. This is what they do. Whether you're at a wedding or whatever it is. They dance. They begin to pick up their feet and put them down. And it doesn't matter if you're a dancer or not. But we're going to do a prophetic gesture. Okay? We're literally going to, and you ain't got to be, you ain't, don't get nervous. <laughs> Hallelujah. My God, don't get nervous. But I come to tell you there's going to be some joy in your feet. Hallelujah. And happiness in your soul. And I won't teach you how to do it. Okay, don't get confused, all right? We literally just put our feet up and down. Hallelujah. I'm dancing on the devil's head. Why? Because I got victory. I'm dancing on the devil's head. Why? Because he brought me out. I'm dancing on the devil's head. Why? Because I'm victorious to him. I'm glory to God. I give him glory. And I dance on his head. Come on, y'all. Come on. Just, come on. It's exercise. Some of y'all didn't get to the gym. Come on, come on, come on. Hallelujah. Oh, come on. That's it. That's it. Yes, we bless you, Jesus. We glorify you. You're the King of kings and you're the Lord of lords. We love you, Jesus. There's none like you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hey, you're stamping on the enemy's head. You're tramping on, hallelujah, on serpents and scorpions on every lie. Hey, glory to Jesus. I dance because I'm free. I dance because I'm blessed. I dance because I'm favored. I dance because I'm victorious. I dance because the Son has made me free. Oh, hallelujah. We give Him praise. We give Him glory. We give Him glory. We give Him glory. We give Him glory. Woo! Hallelujah. My, 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 my. Woo! Glory to Jesus. And you know, this is the thing. That exercise, you can do it wherever you are. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Sometimes I just go in my office and I just go. Oh, yeah. Yeah, girl. Hallelujah. When I didn't know how we were going to meet things and there were requirements made, I go in my office and I began to dance. I said, where the head, not the tail, the money come from the north, the south, the east, the west. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over. Yes, favor, favor, favor. Come on and give a praise. Glory 
to God. He's the excellent one. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 I used to sing that when I was a little girl. I said, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Give you praise. Give you praise. Give you praise, Lord, we do. Give you praise, give you praise, give you, give you praise. Hallelujah. If there's anyone here today that desire prayer for any need, please come forward. There are prayer ministers available to minister to you. Come on and walk into your bright new day. You are the healed of the Lord. Walk into your future with hope. Hold your head up high. Hallelujah. For the grace of God is upon you. And the favor of God lasts a lifetime. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless you. Hallelujah. Lord, we give you thanks today for what you've done in this place and all around the world. God, we know there's breakthrough. We know that there's miracles recovery, the healing of the brokenhearted. God, you, by your anointing, have broken every yoke, and we give you all the glory and all the praise. And everybody said in Jesus' name. Come on, can we tell Sharon thank you today for, for this great message and this great time together in the Spirit of God? Man, I don't want to quit. I wish we could just stay here for the next, you know, two, three hours. But listen, those of you who are waiting for ministry today, we're going to be here as long as we need to be here for you to get ministered to. Our prayer ministers are, are excited and blessed to be able to minister to you. And those of you on the internet, I want to just remind you that we are prayer ministers standing by to minister to you wherever you are joining us from right now. You can call this phone number, 719 area code, 635-1111. And we've got people standing by waiting for your call even right now that will pray with you. And we are seeing miracles, recovery, breakthrough of every kind in our prayer center. So please don't hesitate to call. We want you to receive wherever you are, just like people are receiving here. There is no distance in the spirit realm. So thank God for his word. Thank God for his favor that is upon us. And thank God for his mercies that are new every single morning. I want to say thank you to Uncle Max for playing and being here on the stage all during that message. Thank you, my brother. What a blessing. You can just come and do this every week, okay? Amen. What a blessing. Again, we will be back next Thursday. Uh, no, we will not be back next Thursday because it's Women's Arise. November the 4th we'll be back. And it'll be Carly Terradez who will be ministering on November the 4th. Next, next week will be Women's Arise here in our auditorium. And Tracy, we have over 1,000 1,142 registrations for our Women's Arise. So that is going to be a great conference. We're going to be hearing from Nicole Marbaugh. 
We're going to be hearing from Audrey Mack and Carrie Pickett, among others. And I'm telling you, it's going to be powerful. So ladies, I hope you can come and be a part of it. But anyway, we are just so grateful for this time together today. And I want to just again say thank you. God bless you.